So, Chris, you've worked on every house Hibbs Homes has built since 2014. Mm -hmm. You have seen some big surprises. What do you think <laughs> some of the biggest surprises you've run into on a side art? Now, be nice, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Art of Custom from Hibbs Homes. Sponsored by Pella Window and Doors and Ferguson Bath Kitchen and Lighting Gallery. In this episode, Kim sits down with Hibbs Homes Director of Marketing, Melody Miners, and Director of Construction and Sales, Chris Pettigo. They discuss the importance of working with your builder as a team when designing and building your custom home. They provide expert tips on what questions to ask and what to look out for when searching for your custom builder. We are getting down to business. Over the past few episodes, we've talked about finding land, architecture, budgeting, and lending. Well, now we're going to start building your dream home. And here to help is a member of the Hibbs Homes team, Chris Pedigo. Chris is our Director of Construction and Sales. Chris, nice to have you with us. Thanks. Happy to be here. Melody Miners is back with us as well. She's our Director of Marketing. She's here to keep us in line, apparently, Chris. She's going to oversee that to make <laughs> sure that, that we don't get too technical. All right, then. <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm really glad Melody's here because this is supposed to be a podcast for the listeners, and we want them to understand the process. And sometimes when you and I talk, we, we have our own code, our own language because we've been doing this for so long. So our tagline that we have for Hibbs Homes is Better Built Custom Homes. What does that mean to you, Chris? Um, it means a couple of things. One is attention to detail. There's several ways to build a house. The finished product can always look shiny, but it's, it's more about the process and crossing T's and dotted I's as you go and making sure that from the ground up that every step is done completely, every step is done thoroughly and properly. And so a lot of that you can't see in the finished product, but when you're talking better built, it has to be not only the things you can see from the outside, but the things that go into the, into the shell. And Melody, for someone who really understands marketing like you do, it has to be about more than just words. You have to embody whatever this tagline is, and that's why we use it. Right. And, you know, it's it's better for people and it's better for the earth. I mean, you have a more durable home, so you're not rebuilding. You know, you do, you're not sinking maintenance costs into things. I mean, it encompasses the entire way that we approach building. And it's interesting because you're, you're talking about what a lot of people call high-performance homes, and we're known as a high-performance builder. And we're going to focus on that pretty in-depth during our next episode. But Chris, without going into the weeds too deeply, what does it mean to build a high-performance home? A high-performance home takes into account a couple of different phases. One is the actual performance of the home, which is high efficiency appliances, a thorough caulk and seal package, things that make the home actually perform better and use less energy. The other side of that is the shell and the way that the home the performs. The shell, you're talking about the walls, the windows, the, the walls, roof. The walls, the window, yeah, the things that actually make up the components of the home that make it perform right. When you build a high-performance home, not only does it perform better from an energy standpoint, but it's a healthier home. It's a cleaner air. It's a more comfortable home because of the way the home performs. It's, it's an all-encompassing statement that covers a lot of different areas. Right. Quieter, no, too. It's quieter. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good point. And in, in today's day and age, a lot of our clients are looking for a home that, that is more quiet. And so one thing that, that I think the listeners would find interesting is that I say back in the day, and of course, back in the day is like a decade ago, so it's not that long ago, we were building some, some of the most high-performing homes on the market. They performed exceptionally well and quite a bit different than a code-built home. Well, what's happened over the past decade is codes have become increasingly more strict, tighter, whatever words you want to use, but they're leveling the playing field a little bit because many of the, the national and local codes are requiring that homes are built a little bit different. They're being built more like we were building homes, you know, back in the day. So what what it's coming down to is it's really not the codes that are driving the construction of the homes anymore. It's the builder who is driving the construction of the homes and what are some of the things they're doing a little bit differently, whether it's water management, whether it's quality control, whether it's customer service, whether it's do they have designers on their team. So the builder really does matter in this case because codes have narrowed the differences between how homes are being built. They have. Yeah. The, you know, the building codes are catching up with, with the energy compliance and the things like that. What they do require are some of the energy components, some of the insulation components and, and the performance factors. And there's always levels of that too. Do you still build at the very code level or do you build above that? Which most of our houses, as you know, actually 
eventually end up above that code built anyway. But the builder becomes very important there because there's a lot of things that the code does not enforce or that, that they don't look for. I mean, they're not coming out there to make sure that the water management is done properly, that the taping of the windows is done properly. That comes back on your builder and their quality control and their trades that they use and their communication with their trades. And you are also handling our sales now, which I think is a really a good role for you because a lot of times the clients come to you and are going to ask very specific questions about building. And so to have someone who has been a builder, who is a builder, who understands what's going on, and someone who is also our director of construction, which basically means you're in charge of our quality control, which is huge. What are you learning from clients in this day and age that they're looking for in a builder? I think people are interested in learning about their home. They don't just want you to tell them, hey, we're going to build you a high performance home. They want to understand what that means. And I think that's where our communication with our clients, because we truly want to educate them as we build their house. We want you to understand not only, hey, here's the insulation you package that you need, and here's the performance package that you need, but here's why. And here's your options, and here's the here's the things that you're getting back out of that in the, in the short window, in the long term, as so far as the um, advantages of your home from a comfort standpoint, from an energy standpoint, from a financial standpoint. So a takeaway there is really good communication from the builder. Mm -hmm. that, that's got to be key. Melody, I read an interesting stat and I, it, several years ago, but I think it's probably the same today as it was back then, that nine out of 10 home searches, number one, they begin online, but the majority of those doing that initial search are women. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and Why are you guys so powerful? <laughs> well, I think, you know, we're, we tend to take the reins on major purchasing decisions and, and introducing them mm -hmm. because this is the home that you're building and, you know, you're managing it. You're going to be the one who moves forward with the search. You're the one who knows where the pain points in your home is. I mean, especially over the last year, I think you're finding more men are actually reaching out because everyone has, is working from home, spending time at home. And we see where we need spaces over here or, you know, we need a quiet spot for Zooms and things like that. So I think you're, you're starting to see a shift right now. But I think when someone is constantly thinking about it, they know when it's time to move on. <laughs> mm -hmm. Gotcha. I want to make sure people understand that what the term custom home means too, because there's also semi-custom and, and production. So real quick, production is if you're going to go into an existing neighborhood, if you see a builder in there building a couple hundred homes, and you might have a choice of five floor plans and five elevations. These are homes that are built almost like on a, a production line, production schedule. Semi-custom is when you have some flexibility between a production and a true custom. You'll have some flexibility when it comes to the design, the elevations, the selection but still you're limited to some extent. So what we are is a custom builder and all custom builders, virtually all custom builders are going to allow you to design the home that you want from scratch, or maybe you start with the plans and tweak them. But most custom builders are going to allow you to finish the home the way you want. You're not going to be limited with selections. And so th those are some big differences as you think about which direction you want to go. Semi-custom homes may be a little bit cheaper to build because you're you're locked into some, some choices. Custom home is generally the most expensive way to go, but you still have much more flexibility going down that route. Now more than ever, it's important for you and your family to enjoy the spaces you're in most often. Count on the experts at Ferguson Bath, Kitchen, and Lighting Gallery to help you make the most of home and create a space you'll love to live in together. Shop online or schedule a personalized consultation to discover stunning products from the comfort of your own home. Chris, as someone who's run many of our projects, what would you tell a client getting into the process from the standpoint of the actual building of the home? What would you tell them to expect? Once you get through design, which is, is the biggest hurdle probably in a custom home, once you get into design, if you've got the right builder, they're going to help you through that process. They're going to keep you involved. They're going to keep you informed. There is extra effort by the homeowner involved there because there are things that need to be decided as we go. 
there are walks that we do with the clients once you get involved with which the walks house. let's let's talk about the walks. right so we do a we do a plumbing walk we do an electrical walk and and when we get to those phases when we start those rough ends of those mechanical phases to make sure in this custom home that things are in the right place you actually walk into the house and hey is this where i want this light switch or is this where i want the shower this, head the controller correct yeah. the, where the where are the heights right or where's the art going to hang where's the furniture going to go to make sure that this house as a custom home truly wraps all that in and you don't get into the house and figure out hey we should have figured something else out. we want to cross as many of those bridges as we go so that when you get into the house it's that truly custom home actually fits exactly what you want so it's not going to be that you sign a contract and you never hear from the builder you're, you're going to see and communicate with and visit the job site multiple times many times absolutely yeah you're you're going to be an integral part of that build on a custom to where from a a production home where you're not as much you know you're gonna you're gonna have a blueprint you're gonna come in and that's what the house is gonna be with a custom you're much more involved in the process I've heard too people describe building production homes as kind of a horror story because once that home is being built they cannot get into it unless there's maybe one or two different times during the process and they have to have an appointment with a custom home you own the home you're coming and going as you really want to you are and and we really want that input i mean when we when we design a custom home we've got a vision for the home the homeowner has a vision for the home and pretty much that's the same but we can't always interpret exactly what that homeowner's expecting. So we want them on site. We want them out there being involved because they may walk in and be like, this isn't what I pictured. Let's fix this now while we're under construction. The communication between the designers and the trades and the and the homeowner is completely different. So um, definitely when you're talking custom home, you want to work with somebody that builds custom homes. And you've mentioned the word designer because we do and most, uh, most builders will have at some level a designer who helps with the finishes, who helps with the selection so the client is not out there on their own. Right, correct. Yeah. And they're very important. They are, they are. I mean, you can go make selections, but you want to make sure that the selections are fitting with the plans and there aren't things that are clashing there that you find out, you know, you've already purchased this and it's a special order and it's here and now we discover it doesn't work. And I know you and I do a lot of joint sale calls together. And, and one of the things that we're always talking to prospective clients and we're giving them information about who we are, we like to share up front, introduce our team to them so they know that we have designers, we have estimators, we have superintendents. We happen to have a superintendent who is assigned to every single project. They're there every single day. So we give them a background as far as who our personnel are and gives them a little bit of an idea of what our process is. But I think that's critical for someone to, who's interviewing a builder, ask, what does your team look like? What are your specific team members? Also talk about the processes. What are your processes for allowing clients to come on the job site? How how often do you do walkthroughs with clients? How do you handle change orders? How do you handle purchase orders? Change orders, we try to avoid them if at all possible. That's why we do so much upfront with budgeting. We do not want a change order. Sometimes they're inevitable. Explain how that ha how that works with your clients. Tell them how a purchase order works, that when, when a client signs off on a selection, we then issue a purchase order to our trade or to our vendor because we want to make sure that what we are ordering, they have approved at that particular price at that particular color. So the process is critical for understanding, have the builder walk through how long the process takes. But I think those are some of the critical things to ask up front. And those are great questions. But how do you know if the answers to those questions are going to be right for your project or for your family even? That's a good question because I think th there has to be trust with the builder. If you're not going to trust the builder, please don't make another selection because this is going to be a long process. It's going to take a minimum of six months for a smaller home and a maximum of maybe a year, 15 months, even longer, depending upon like if we're building in, in northern Utah in some of those mountain areas, it could be an 18-month or two-year build. You're putting together together a team of an architect and a builder that's going to be together for a very long period of time. I don't know there's any way you can verify that melody, but I think you have to have that trust factor. You have to understand the builder references, key, talk to references. Now, everybody's going to give you someone they got along with. I get that. I understand it. But references are, are part of your due diligence when you're selecting a builder. Um, so that, you know, some of the typical questions that you want to ask along the way, I don't know, Chris. You're, you're a lot like me. I kind of go with your gut. You will know who the right fit is for you. Absolutely. And I think in that initial interview process, when you're looking for a custom builder, you want to put out 
your expectations and what is your level of involvement and what, you know, some, some clients really do want to be really in the weeds and really involved. Other clients would much rather say, Hey, I want to make my selections and, and pretty much be done. I don't have time. We have built houses for people that are traveling that are, that are relocating here. And so sometimes, you know, we have to customize our schedule to fit around what their, what their style is and what their availability is. So I think that's important to, to talk to your builder ahead of time and, and set your, set your precedence as a, here's what I expect and here's what we want out of the custom build. And it sounds like a lot of sunshine and rainbows right now. And, and, <laughs> and quite frankly, most of the time it is. Most of the time, a good builder, a real good process, good team, good result. I've got to warn everybody though, this would be the first time that this particular set of plans would have been built. There are some pinch points along the way. And it's really a matter of how does the builder respond? How does he communicate? Does he come up with some options? But I promise you, there will be some headaches that you have to overcome. And it's just the nature of our industry, right? It is. And in and, and our policy and what I, what I stress with our team is we don't ever want to bring up an issue without having some possible solutions. I mean, we don't want to come to you and say, hey, we don't know what to do. This is a mess. We want to come back and say, hey, here's a problem with the plan we discovered in the middle of this. Or here's a problem with your layout or your cabinet layout that you picked out. Here's some possible options ahead of time and let's talk through it. So it's, it's about how you handle those. So that's a great question for a builder right there is how do you handle issues on the job site? What would you do? And if you have a builder that says, well, I'm not really sure. We'll just, we'll just deal with it as it comes up. To me, that's not a good answer. You want a builder who will say, the first thing I'm going to do is find solutions, find options. The second thing I'm going to do is communicate with you and say, here's what's going on. Here are your options. There's a problem. Let's find a solution. So Chris, you've worked on every house Hibs Homes has built since 2014. Mm -hmm. You have seen some big surprises. What do you think some <laughs> of the biggest surprises you've run into on a site are? Now, be nice, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on, we've, we've had some architects errors. We've had, and, we, and there's things that you can, somebody possibly could have caught, but nobody did. There's also things that nobody could have caught. So there's things like um, on a teardown, we found a cistern underneath a house. Um, yeah, but that was cool, right? It was cool. I mean, it was- <laughs> it, it made was, the news. It was an exploration of, of sorts, <laughs> but you know, there's going to be things like that. There's going to be site issues. There's going to be unforeseen issues that come up on a custom build that you just have to be able to handle. Then there's also things that are human errors. I mean, we've had things where an architect made a mistake and, you know, this elevation was wrong or the computer messed up and the roof line's actually into this window. So we need to redesign. There are a lot of issues that come up in a custom process that, that you're going to have to have the ability to handle properly and, and come up with proper solutions. And I think it's up to the builder. We do it during our initial sales conversations. We do it again during the pre-budget meeting. We do it again during pre-construction as we remind everyone that we will have some issues along the way that we're dealing with. And just understand that we're your advocate. We're working for you. We're working to find solutions. I think that that, that communication is so critical that to me, is one of the most important components of a builder. It's one of our core values, you know, unmatched communication. And I think that goes a long way towards solving pretty much any problem that you might run into on the, on the job site is if you have the builder who's communicating with you and communicating options. It's just part of kind of who we are and, and, and part of the process. On the flip side, <laughs> not, not to go too far over, but we have had over the years some clients who, quite frankly, are so involved and it can really have a negative effect on the project because they're too into reading online and finding out things that they think are that we're doing wrong and coming back and reporting it. How do you as a superintendent handle that, Chris? So what people have to understand with a custom home is there's not always one right way to do something. So, you know, when you do have a customer and it comes back to that communication, I mean, you do, we do want their input. We do want that second set of eyes. But at some point, if it gets to be where, you know, they're actually not following the right channels or they're going out and talking to the trades directly and, and trying to change things on the site, that's been a common problem with, with a few of those customers to where they just have to, you have to have that communication and understand that, if you need to make a change or if you need or if you have a question or something about you want some clarification on the way something's being done, you really need to run it through your superintendent and through myself as opposed to going out and talking to trades directly because that's where confusion happens. We have a document where we truly do try to provide helpful 
information to our clients to give them an understanding of what's going to happen during construction. And if this happens, that's going to happen. A perfect example of it might be raining at at 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock in the morning, and then all of a sudden the sun comes out. Well, we've had the experience when all of a sudden the client, the sun comes out and they think the framing crew should immediately be on the job site and and framing the house. But what they don't realize is when bids are submitted, they're submitted for full eight hour days. And the crew is not going to show up if they're only going to get a few hours of work. Generally, sometimes they will. But there is a good reason if the crew is not there is because it's bid a specific way. And if they start piecemealing it, they're going to have to charge more. Another example might be communicating with the superintendents or the designers. We're, like most builders, busy. I'm very adamant as a business owner with that work-life balance for all of our team members. So I really, and I put in the document that, you know, our team is going to work extremely hard from you from seven o'clock in the morning till five o'clock in the afternoon. Open lines of communication, you know, feel free to communicate with your superintendent, but please respect us after hours. We still have, you know, even to this day, a lot of clients who kind of don't necessarily follow that boundary, if you will. But I think that's important. Talk with your builder about setting the proper expectations. Everything from what happens when when it rains to what happens when it snows. What about communication with your team? If you set the right expectations up front, I think the process itself goes much better. Right. And the homeowners need to understand that a, that a construction of a custom home is a fluid process. And we update our customers with a schedule and we kind of, here's what to expect over the next couple of weeks. But it is fluid. And, and you know, the workforce comes, you know, has different ebbs and flows. So, you know, we might have planned on the roofers being there on Tuesday, but they may be finishing the roof up from before and it may be a couple of days. So it is a fluid process and people need to understand that going in that it's not a black and white. Here's what exactly what's going to happen. It's a it's a nine month or it's an 11 month process and it's going to be ups and downs and, and on the schedule. And but at the end, We've planned for that. And weather does play an important role in the process as well. But we as builders try to build in some days that we know we're going to have bad weather and not going to be at the job site. But if you all of a sudden have like two weeks, like in some winters where you have two weeks of extremely mm-hmm. cold weather, right. this winter, like for this example, one, yes. yeah, that, that nobody can get to the job site, that is going to affect the construction schedule. But that's where I think the builders should come back to the client and say, remember, we did have this this stretch, so it's going to slow us down a little bit. Mm-hmm. Well, and we use co-construct to mm-hmm. communicate with our clients as well. And um, so if someone's selecting a builder, finding a way to communicate off hours without texting them or calling them is a really great way to know that, you know, Chris is going to get your message in the morning or, you know, the communication lines stay open 24-7. Right. Yeah. And co-construct, just so everybody understands, it's our project management software that we use that allows us to communicate with our clients. We communicate schedules and and specs and selections and, and all sorts of really good information. It's kind of a central location for everything we do, and it really works exceptionally well. This podcast is sponsored by Palo Windows and Doors. Pella is the industry leader in innovation and style. Windows have become a key element in home design, and Pella has the product and professionals to guide you to your perfect solution. Pella is cutting edge in energy efficiency, durability, and performance. If you're tired of looking through screens, check out the Pella Integrated Roll Screen that you won't see until you need it. Pella offers the broadest selection of premium products to meet any budget and any design inspiration. Allow Pella to show you what they can do to improve the style and comfort of your home. With Pella's limited lifetime warranty, you won't have to worry about windows and doors again. Call 314-714-0100 to make an appointment or visit our showroom in Chesterfield Valley. So what is the one thing that you would tell a home builder? We've gone through the the design process, the budgeting, the lending. We're about ready to break ground. What is the one thing, any, any advice that you would give to clients at this point? Just temper expectations. Be, be flexible. Just keep that relationship with your superintendent and with your manager. And, and you know, just keep that respectful and, and, and understand that it is a process that we, and we try to keep it light. We try to keep it easy. And I think with our organization and, and our systems that we have in place, we do make it an enjoyable process. But when you get started with that, you just need to understand that, as, as you said, all rainbows and sunshine, a custom home building process, there are going to be speed bumps, but it's a, it's a team effort. And if you go in with that 
team attitude that, hey, we're going to work with you, you're going to work with us, and and together we're going to get through it and build a great home. Um, that's the best plan. You use the word team, and I know that that we use the word team within Hibbs Homes all the time because I still say we have just an exceptional team for, for what we do out in northern Utah and, and in the St. Louis area. But I, I don't want to give people the, the idea that, you, you know, you might have a builder they call them one man band or somebody who works on their own who really does everything takes on fewer projects there are really good builders out there that do that you don't have to find a builder who has a large team or even a medium team you truly can do your due diligence interview people talk to architects talk to friends who've built and and then talk to the builders themselves there are some really good solo builders out there who will walk you through the process all the way through communicate exceptionally well help you with the selections help you with everything so don't think that we're advocating that you have to find a builder who has a, a larger team. All we're saying is make sure you ask the right questions and feel very comfortable and then go with your gut. Always follow your gut. And I think that the project should turn out well for you. And it will. And so when you're in that early process, you know, you're involved with the budgeting and you're involved with the design. But once the home starts and you're building a custom home, when you build with us, you're actually so we have a four person team. You have your superintendent, your estimator, your designer. You're that fourth member. When I send out my emails I'm up to all parties, I'm like, hey, team. And I, and I take my homeowners as part of that because mm-hmm. you're an integral part of our of our process. And so, you know, you're, you're that fourth member of that team for that build. And the one thing that I would recommend is make sure that your builder will have someone on site every single day. We do. And I think it's only right because things can change very quickly on a job site. And if you're not there every single day, if you're not there to help the trades answer questions, solve problems, understand where you are, I don't think you're really taking care of your client. I think it's important to have your physical eyes on that job site every single day. I agree. I mean, you can only put so much information on a set of plans. And then the rest of that communication in a custom, when you're, you know, your superintendent, and especially in our, in our case, our superintendent's really involved with the designers. We have those weekly meetings. And there's a lot of information that that designer and that superintendent have that's not on that plan necessarily. So that's very important that those people stay involved regularly and, you know, have those eyes on those sites because they're the ones that truly have a, a grasp on all those little details. We do have an awesome team and and been very pleased with that team. Melody, you're a, someone who is really passionate about this industry, which is great. I think you might have some some final thoughts, too, on on suggestions for people who are thinking about building. Well, I think that finding a builder who has an in-house architect is going to be invaluable when you're working on that custom home, just being able to value engineer it. Or if you're even bringing plans to the builder, having an architect to review them and understand how that builder is going to execute and making adjustments from there is going to save so much time and money in the long run. That is a very valuable point. So glad you brought that up. And we mentioned before on our podcast, that's why we brought Lucy on board, our architect team member, who does a phenomenal job, but it allows us to have so much more control over the process. Great question to ask your builder. Do you have a designer that's on staff? If not, who is the designer you recommend? And make sure you interview that designer because if he or she is putting together a team, you want to make sure you're meeting all the important parts of that team. Yeah, that's correct. And, and you know, whether it's in-house or whether it's out, you really want your builder to stay engaged with the architect. Very interesting conversation. And by the way, if you would like more information or if you'd like to get a document that gives you the questions to ask when choosing a builder, go to our show notes and you can download it. And it's a really good document to help you understand what are what are the critical questions to ask, right, Melody? Yeah, and you can make sure that you hit every point yes. as you're going down because <laughs> it can be overwhelming sometimes when you're talking to someone in, who's in the industry and they know so much more but than you it, do. But it's really funny, though, because a lot of times clients will come to us and they'll have a long list of questions. And I always think that's great because it shows that they're serious and it shows they're prepared. So also, don't forget our phone number. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. We'd love to hear from you, 314 266 9709. That's 314 266 9709. Chris, Melody, did we miss anything? I think we covered a lot of ground today. I think so. I think so too. Hopefully, did we, it was. We break some ground. 
Oh, I get what she did there. <laughs> that was good, Melody. Yeah, we broke some ground today. Hopefully we covered a lot of ground and hopefully we've been able to provide our listeners with a lot of great information because there really is nothing like building that custom home. Coming up on our next episode, it's going to be part two with Melody and Chris. We're going to continue our conversation about custom home building, but we're going to focus on high performance homes. Some people call them green homes. We're going to dig deep in with several guests from across the country to help you understand what your options are, what the costs are, how about the payback, and what are the benefits. We're going to help you understand all of this so you can make an informed decision when designing and building your custom home. For more information, visit www.artofcustompodcast.com or find us on Facebook as The Art of Custom and on Twitter at Art of Custom Pod. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts to get the latest episodes, and please rate and review to help us grow. The Art of Custom is produced by Hugmaster Sound with original music by Adam Frick-Ferdine. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.